September 6, 1781. A British fleet sails up the Connecticut coast and anchors at the mouth of the Thames River. Former Revolutionary War hero turned traitor, General Benedict Arnold leads the King's strike force. Ships land troops on either side of the Thames, half at Groton's Point, half near Brown's Farm. By 8 a.m., each force marches north towards their targets, New London and Fort Griswold. 1,600 infantry, 300 light horse. On the west bank of the river, the earthwork defenses of Fort Trumbull face the water, but Arnold's troops march from the land. By 9 a.m., five enemy companies bear down on Fort Trumbull. Another, led by Arnold himself, commences its attack on New London. British troops set fire to the city. From his position at Fort Trumbull, the fort's commander, Captain Adam Shapley, can see troops advancing on Fort Griswold and New London in flames. From Fort Trumbull's low wall, Shapley knows his position will soon be overrun. Frustrated, he fires around, then gives orders to spike the cannon, jamming the barrels so the enemy cannot use the guns against them. Quickly. Shapley and his men cross the river to make a stand with the defenders of Fort Griswold. Meanwhile, more of New London's neighborhoods go up in flames. Inside Fort Griswold, Colonel Ledyard receives an ultimatum from British commanders Ayers and Montgomery. Surrender or be put to death. Ledyard refuses. A vicious struggle begins. Keisha from American cannon and musket fire carve a swath in British ranks advancing from the northeastern corner of the fort. Colonel Ayres is wounded and is said to have died on board the fleet the night they embarked. A second column attacks from the south and southwest flanks of the fort. Montgomery is killed by a pike as he passes through one of the embrasures. Both British commanders are lost, yet their men press forward. 165 American defenders struggle to keep the enemy from breaching the gates, but to no avail. Bursting into the fort, enemy infantry quickly overwhelm the garrison. Colonel Ledyard orders his men to cease firing and throw down their arms. But British troops, now led by Captain Bloomfield, ignore the gesture. They march forward, mowing down defenseless Americans. The battle becomes a massacre. Colonel Ledyard is struck down. Some 85 defenders die outright. Some 35 are mortally wounded. Finally, the killing stops. 40 Americans are taken prisoner, herded together at the riverbank, forced to lie in the blistering sun. Those who survive behold their city in shambles. It is a defeat that will shape the future of New London. From this point on, New London's town fathers realize that they must be, at all times, vigilant, ready to ward off any attack from both the land and the sea, ready to make their city a formidable fortress and the defender of the Thames.